Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Saturday, the 26th day of June, year of our Lord, 2021. I do pray this find you well this evening. It will rain on and off today. I think maybe a little bit more tomorrow. It's definitely getting warmer out there. I did see some blue sky. Unfortunately, here, right here, very localized. The rain has been nice, but not... Uh, we haven't had these really heavy downpours that are erosive to the soil. And as I know, even just a few miles south of here, they've had some pretty good, you know, a significant amount of rain over a couple of inches in a, in a matter of uh, an hour or so. So we're fortunate it's not a hit. But a good, a good rain, the grass is nice and wet, the ground is nice and wet. So we thank God for that. Here's a little sunshine, dry things out a little bit, get that corn growing. It does look pretty good, but I'm not a farmer, so don't hang your head on anything I say. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And tonight, according to the daily lectionary, we turn to the book of Acts. I'm going to read a portion of the assigned reading for this day. This is from the book of Acts, or the Acts of the Apostles, A-C-T-S, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. And Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men, buried Stephen, and made great lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip. When they heard him, and saw the signs that he did for unclean spirits, coming out with a loud voice, came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city, and that is the, the, the word of the Lord. Now, of course, that begins with the Apostle Paul, but he's still known as Saul at this point. We, we find the very, first, the very first verse, we find him giving his approval to the martyrdom of Stephen. He is approving that Stephen was just stoned to death. And we hear about with great zeal, he's dragging off men and women and committing them to prison for doing what? For following the way, for people who were devoted to Christ. He thinks he's doing a servant, servant to God. Now, there's one thing we can learn from this. Make no mistake what evil is capable of. Uh, the own evil in our hearts, maybe the anger that you have felt at times where if you, you know, were not one of God's children and didn't hold that in check, you, you realize, man, what you're, you're capable of, it can be frightening to face that within yourself. Anger and, and rage and maybe a, a proper word. Hopefully it's very rare for us as God's people. It should be. But to see the evil in the world around us, and it's around us even now, and the anger. I'm, a, I'm amazed when I see, and this is not a political statement other than an observation, but when I see these political rallies. And I do find them a little frightening at times because of the anger and the rage people have over what? Over what? And what they are capable of doing. Well, we're seeing, you know, uh, some of the destruction that we see in our, not only our own community, but our, the communities around us. It, it is, and if you're caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, it doesn't matter. It, it is amazing what we are capable of. So here Paul, thinking, he, thinking he's doing, or Saul, as he's still known, thinking he's doing a service to God, is direct, breaking up families and committing these people to prison for blasphemy. And many will probably die in prison. These are not nice prisons. I mean, you don't want to go to prison anyway, but these are not, you know, there are no cable TV, no weight rooms or anything like that. You are, you are in jail and probably going to die for committing blasphemy. Now, after Stephen is martyred, we hear about his body being carried off by his um, uh, some of the some of the devout followers of Jesus Christ, or some of his colleagues. We hear how they're scattered. Now that's another thing we want to learn from this tonight. This is the great triumph of the cross, and this doesn't mean our life is going to go easier. It doesn't mean we're not going to face challenges. It just means that God is working wonderfully, powerfully, 
in our suffering. Even, even he, I mean, he uses the evil of Saul. This is before he's the apostle, as, as this evil that Paul is committing is, is scattering these disciples of Christ. He's using that scattering to, to promote the gospel, to proclaim the gospel wherever they're sent. We hear at the end of that about Philip. So don't you think that when you're suffering, and when it seems like Satan has the upper hand and evil has the upper hand, that God isn't working. He most certainly is. And that's the promise he gives to us. We hear Paul, Paul, that Paul, this Paul, we hear him say that, and Paul is going to suffer greatly for the gospel. But we hear them, we hear him write this in Romans, particularly Romans chapter 8, you know, that uh, for, for those of us who love God, he works all things for good. We know that. We know in our suffering that God is working good. That he, his good, not necessarily our personal good, like we're going to get wealthy and we're not going to suffer, but we who are saved and know that we are people of the life to come, we are people of the resurrection, our resurrection, that even in suffering, God is working. I mean, think about the cross. Everybody thought that that was it. And what did God do? He saved everybody. He saved the world. Now, there's one final thing in this uh, kind of an overarching theme, if you will, like I like to use that phrase, an overarching theme in this. It's Paul's. Uh, great sin and his great forgiveness. Don't think, most of you have not gone to people's houses and uh, dragged them out and committed them to prison, but these people that you see filled with rage, or if that's been you, remember Christ died for them, and forgiveness is there for them as it is for you, and there's nothing that you have done, nothing. I don't have to know you to make this, uh, to, to say this statement, because it's a completely true statement. There is nothing you have done that isn't forgiven by Christ our Lord, that he didn't die for and pay the price for nothing. But, but pastor, what if he, no, you know, look at what Paul did. Paul's going to return to this over uh, and over again in his epistles, and he's not going to hide what he did, uh, but he's going to bask in the grace of God, as should you and as many of you do. Wonderful text. Uh, the book of Acts is, a, I think, kind of an understudied book in the church, but it is an absolutely phenomenal book for us to read and to uh, be familiar with as God's people because we see life in the church after the resurrection and ascension of our Lord, what it looks like, the problems they face, and the promise of Christ and forgiveness that is there for everybody, and that includes you. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Nuctimittis. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We turn back tonight to page 294 to guide our prayers for, for Saturday. So let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we do pray in the face of increasing persecution and increasing hostility towards your people, even in our own communities and often in our own families, for faithfulness to the end. We ask you to renew and restore those who are withering on the vine or have fallen away from the faith, that they would know of your unending forgiveness and your love for them and your desire that they would be with you and us forever. We ask you as we prepare, as we prepare to receive the divine gifts tomorrow for receptive hearts and minds that are tuned to God's word, and hearts that are eager to accept it and listen. We pray that you bless pastors, including me, as we prepare to administer 
these great gifts, particularly the Holy Supper, and to proclaim the precious word of Christ. Bless the words that we say. Grant us clarity of thought. Keep Satan far from us and your people, that your word may go out unhindered. Be with those who are crying out to you for healing. We, as, as usual, these last few nights continue to pray for Len, our dear brother in Christ, for my dear friend Blaise, brother in office, and for a dear friend of our congregation, Jason, and all who are crying out to you. We ask you to place your healing hand upon them, but keep them mindful of your victory, even over death itself. We thank you for the rain and pray for favorable weather that our farmers may, may be your instruments in providing, for the, providing us with the abundant fruits of the earth. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Free into your hands, I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn number 666. There are four stanzas all together, and I will sing the first. O little flock, fear not the foe, who madly seeks your overthrow. Dread not his rage and power, and though your courage sometimes faints, his seeming triumph for God's saints lasts but a little hour. That is a beautiful hymn written by Jacob Fabricius, um, who died in 1654. O little flock, fear not the foe. And again, that stands a one of four. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you maybe in church tomorrow. Uh, but if not, uh, we'll see you right here tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. God be with you all. Good night.